The fact that I am a diabetic means that I need to prick my finger a couple of times a day and take a blood sample. In addition, I have also found that the frequency of blood tests ordered by the doctor has increased over the years, which is directly related to my age. I go to my doctor to see how I am doing and he pulls out sheaves of paper containing all the information that he has discovered through the blood tests. What is obvious is that my blood is packed with information about my body. Not only does blood play a vital role in the body's life, but it is also a superhighway where vital information is stored. As our opening song reminded us that as Christians we sing with great gusto songs and hymns about the cleansing blood of Jesus. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or down at the cross where my Saviour died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Or perhaps I believe Jesus saves and his blood makes me whiter than snow and the list goes on. No doubt many of us pause to wonder just how ridiculous the philosophy sounds, that to be washed in blood will make us clean. Ever try to get a blood stain out of a garment? It has no physical cleaning powers about it, quite the opposite. Yet the reality is that is exactly what the Bible teaches. To be washed in Jesus' blood is our only real hope of being spiritually clean. If you take a cursory look at the Bible, one can quickly come to the conclusion that the book is obsessed with the subject of blood. There were around 369 references to it in the Bible, around 60 of them in relation to Jesus. It is interesting to note that despite the fact that it can seem a bit off-putting to some people, there seems to be such a central place in the Judeo-Christian religion for a subject that many people may find distasteful. Glory, glory, Jesus saves me. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Oh, the cleansing blood has reached me. Glory, glory to the Lamb.
Blood has two symbolic and crucial roles. It is the source of life, no blood, no life. It maintains the body's internal environment by serving as a natural cleansing and transport system. The process by which blood cleanses the body involves a series of complex mechanisms that ensure the removal of waste products and toxins while delivering essential nutrients. There is no doubt that the ancients understood that blood is vital for life. Without blood, there is no life. However, they had no concept of the blood as a cleansing agent. It wasn't until 1628 that English physician William Harvey discovered that blood circulated throughout the body in a closed system, pumped by the heart. The result marked a significant departure from the previously held belief that blood was consumed by tissues. Various scientists and researchers have furthered our understanding of how blood cleanses by transporting nutrients, oxygen and removing waste. When we come to understand the significant cleansing role that blood carries out in our bodies, the theological application is spot on. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. It was a common belief among ancient cultures that when blood was shed, it had a mysterious power. The role that it appears to have played in religious rituals and other aspects of everyday life is also very significant. Since it is the life force within our bodies, there has been a belief that it can atone for sin since it is a spiritual force that has a close relationship with the person. For Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow, plunged now into the crimson flood that washes white as snow.
this subject of blood appears to be saturated with confusing metaphors, such as those found in many hymns, such as the one we just listened to. Those of you who have tried to wash dried blood out of a garment know that it doesn't come out as white as snow when it's washed. Numerous hymns have been written and are in use to this very day that speak of the power of the blood of Jesus. As difficult and as confusing as this subject may be, we need to have some understanding of it if our spiritual pilgrimage is to make sense. Throughout the New Testament, the blood of Christ atones for the sins of the people, making it possible for a pure and holy people to be created. There is no life without blood, and life is one of the characteristics of God. It is the blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many people. It is important to note that the blood of Christ not only establishes a new covenant, but also forgives sins. Paul states in Romans that the blood of Jesus redeems, that is, it pays off a debt that has been accrued by sin. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. Jesus, see me at thy feet, nothing but thy blood can save me. Thou alone my need canst meet, nothing but thy blood can save me. Perhaps the most enlightening scriptural passage on this subject is found in the ninth chapter of Hebrews. After outlining the layout and activities in the temple, the writer goes on. When these things were all in place, the priests regularly entered the first room as they performed their religious duties. But only the high priest ever entered the most holy place and only once a year and he always offered blood for his own sins and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. 
By these regulations, the Holy Spirit revealed that the entrance to the most holy place was not freely open as long as the tabernacle and the system it represented were still in use. This is an illustration pointing to the present time, for the gifts and sacrifices that the priests offer are not able to cleanse the consciences of the people who bring them, for that old system deals only with food and drink and various cleansing ceremonies, physical regulations that were in effect only until a better system could be established. In verses uh, 6 to 10 of Hebrews 9, the writer deals with the processes and comes to the obvious conclusion that all the elaborate rituals and traditions are not able to cleanse the consciences of the people who bring them. He finally arrives at the point that these things were but temporary only until a better system could be established. Having given a praise of the temple and its operation, the writer now moves on to the crux of his argument. The old covenant, with its series of sacrifices, worship and shedding of blood, was but a pale and ineffective attempt to connect with God. Through the redemptive death of Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood on the cross and his resurrection, a new and better covenant is available. It is a covenant founded on Jesus as our high priest and intercessor with God in heaven. Everything good that will come from this new covenant comes because Jesus has shed his blood and has been appointed by God to the role of high priest. In many ways, this is the narrow way of humanity's pilgrimage back to God. Men have built great edifices and constructions to worship God and, in a sense, contain his presence, but they are, in reality, puny and pale attempts to mimic the more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which is a spiritual dwelling and can never be part of the created world. As much as modern humanity shrinks from the idea of sacrifice and the shedding of blood to secure forgiveness, these are realities in Hebrews and there is no way around them. Within a few verses, the writer will unequivocally lay down this claim. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified by blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. As much as modern humanity wants to turn away from the concept of blood shed to remove sins, it cannot. It is Jesus' own blood that flows from his body that is the only viable cleansing process that sinful humanity can ever know. The blood of goats and calves under the old covenant were but pale symbolism of what was to come under the new covenant. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh,
I believe that inherent in all honest human beings is a sense of inner impurity which they would want to eradicate. Now, many would not admit to it, but that does not mean it does not exist. The Bible is very clear that we are all, without exception, corrupted by sin. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we are to accept the Bible's summary of the sinful nature of humanity, then we are left with a quandary of how we deal with it. In our most honest moments, we would admit that no matter how hard we try, we are unable to produce any permanent effective inner cleansing. Consequently, we have to come to the conclusion that we need a power greater than ourselves to deal with this issue. As uncomfortable as it may be, we are forced back to the only answer to our dilemma which is found in the Bible. It is only through the redemptive death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood that we can find the cleansing that is effective and permanent. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can keep me always clean? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
I think it may be true to say that most decent human beings want to live lives with a clear conscience and the only real resolution to that desire is to have our conscience cleansed by some means. The Bible maintains there is only one way our human conscience can be cleansed and it is by the blood shed by Jesus Christ. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? All too often in the rush and pressures of modern life, We are just content to rinse off the surface grime of sin that daily living brings and leave the deep-seated stains in our conscience that need deeper attention. There is cleansing and healing for all who will wash in the life-giving flood. There is perfect deliverance and joy to be had in this world through the blood. 